Hello. Good morning. Welcome back. Today is day two of the project that we're doing with the Happiness in Crafting Vintage Botanical Kit. In case you don't know, I'm Claire. This is Purple Poppy. And today I'm coming to you from a rather grey and cloudy Kent. It's not the best out there, but I guess, you know, we're still in winter. What do we expect? So, quick recap. Yesterday, we covered our manila file folder. Okay, so we made all our score lines. We covered the areas, we decorated our envelopes, we put them in there. We made the inside pocket here. Okay, so that was yesterday. Now today is slightly different. Today is really all about the preparation for tomorrow. So we are obviously going to be working with the kit. But we're going to be working on individual elements, not on the actual folder that we were working on yesterday. So today I have brought along what may seem like a variety of oddness. Because I have got a black bin bag. Any form of plastic will do. I have got two tag size pieces of my coffee dyed cotton. You can use any plain fabric for this. You can use the white cotton or the cream cotton. You could use a pink fabric, a bluey fabric, anything that will work with the colours in the kit. I've brought along a pot of coffee. You might understand why I've got black sat now. I've brought along my black archival ink. The main reason I've bought this one is because it's waterproof, okay? I have got a variety of stamps here. So I've got some text. I've got a postcard. I have got a stamp mark. A stamp. And a butterfly. Now, if you don't have those stamps, it really isn't a problem. You can use whatever stamps you have. And as I go through, you'll see why I'm using these stamps and you'll be able to work out which of your stamps will work. And obviously I've got a stamping block, okay? And from the kit today, I have got the hinged flap pocket page. I have got the journal cover page. I've got the journal centre page, the spare page that we originally put for envelope two, which will now be an additional page to the journal. And I have bought the ephemera sheet that has the four postcard type pieces on, and the one that has all the lovely pieces of ephemera, okay? I've also got, just set them to one side for a minute, I've also got the odds that we pulled off yesterday. Okay? So, the first thing, I've just realised there's a sheet missing that I also want. And I've also got this tag sheet that you can see I've already cut up and you'll see why in a minute. I've got a piece of standard coffee dyed paper and I've got a piece of fabric now this fabric can be any form of fabric you like you need it to be clean but that's all now I've pulled off a piece of my cotton dyed coffee uh, coffee dyed cotton that is a bit of a mouthful mainly because I have so much of it and it's just handy to my desk but you can use any fabric for this you can even use a dishcloth if it's a clean cotton type dishcloth you can use that okay I'm going to move my coffee out of the way I'm going to lay out my black sack 
because the main thing I don't want to do is get coffee all over my desk. So that is why we've got this black sack and you'll understand that any form of plastic will do. In my pot here, I have just put three teaspoons of standard instant coffee. I've put about a tablespoon of boiling water to melt the granules and then just topped it up with cold water, okay? I have my cloth, get rid of that bit of string, and I'm gonna put my cloth into my coffee, okay? I want that nicely wet. Okay, I should have bought a towel. Didn't think about that. I wipe them down my trousers. Don't tell me, Mum. So, I'm going to squeeze that out. Good and strong. And then open it out. Okay, and then screw it up again. Just like that. Nothing overly clever. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to coffee dye not the hinged flap but the other three complete pages okay now I use an inkjet printer so anybody that's added water to an inkjet printer page will know that you run the risk of the pattern running and becoming messy some people like that look that's absolutely fine doesn't work for me so the way we can coffee dye the backs of these pages easily without that happening is to do what I'm going to show you now so I'm just rubbing out where I wrote what these pages were okay rub off the wording we don't want that on there okay so what I'm gonna do is one at a time I'm gonna take this cloth that we have dipped in the coffee and screwed up and I am gonna roll across my page like this now this is a very old technique that I used to use years ago when I was working as an interior designer. Yes, I know, I've done lots of things <laughs> uh, over my working life. And in fact, I did take my interior design skills and I did use them as part of teaching at adult education. I did that for a number of years, okay? And this was always known as rag rolling and we used to do it with paint so there you go you can see obviously there are some drips on my plastic that's not made the paper wet enough to ruin the design on the other side but it's added interest but obviously we need to set them aside to dry which is why I've called today preparation so now I'm going to go in again you really need to do one dip per sheet okay and then just open it out again and then screw it up again okay start at one corner and literally just roll across the sheet you can roll in different ways you can open it out screw it up again and you will get this whoops you will get this lovely pattern running across your page breaking up the white without damaging your print on the other side okay again put it off to dry and then the last one for this little section, open it out, put it in, squeeze it out, okay, because the answer is that you want it damp, not wet, okay, 
bring your sheet in start at the top and literally just roll come to the bottom roll back up roll from the other side pull it out there is no wrong way of doing this anyone can do this you can't do it wrong it's easy peasy once you've been told the basics so there you go and you can if you have the patience use this to do all of your coffee dyeing but obviously if you were coffee dyeing lots of pages this would take quite a bit of time I do do it sometimes on things like envelopes just because it's a little bit different you can even press down with it because you've got a screwed up line that will leave you a pattern okay and again I'm going to set that to one side to dry now if you wanted to where's the paintbrush here's a paintbrush you can add to that by taking any paintbrush doesn't matter I'm going to bring in the very first one we did because obviously that is the driest and I'm just going to dip it in hold it on my finger and just get some drip lines on top as well just to intensify the pattern okay and then obviously the second one we did because that's the next driest the art obviously with inkjet printing is not to add any more moisture to the page than you really have to okay and then the last one this one just some dots for interest okay put my paintbrush in my water jar okay now the other thing that's happened of course is we have now got a really dark piece of fabric that we can use excuse me once it's dry for coffee dyeing etc i'm going to move my bowl out of the way i'm going to move my wet plastic out of the way okay and the next thing that I want to do is I want to bring in some PVA, a new piece of plastic to protect my table. And I'm gonna bring in one of these tag sized pieces of coffee dye cotton. I am going to find the tag part of the page and the reason this one's been cut up is because I've already done one and what we're going to do is we're going to do an image transfer so that we've got our tag onto some fabric okay so it's very very simple it's not a new technique at all but like that rag rolling we just did this has been done quite a lot um, there was a phase a while ago where people were doing photographs on wood and the like that's done in exactly the same way as this and what we're going to do is we're going to take a paintbrush any paintbrush will do and to take a paintbrush we're going to go into our PVA and we are going to paint onto the actual image not the back to stick it down like you would normally do but onto the actual image okay make sure you cover the image completely any areas that you don't cover won't work okay this is just standard pva uh, i've had a few questions in the past about what is pva PVA is the standard white craft glue that you use. It's also used in the building trade um, to avoid damp and mould marks, but that's a, another story entirely. 
So it's just a standard white craft glue that you can get just about anywhere. We have totally covered our image. We are now going to put on our piece of fabric and we are going to press that on nice and firm. Make sure it's properly sticking down. Okay, like so. You can even turn it over, take your bone folder and give it a good press home. You will see it will stretch because obviously it's fabric and fabric is stretchy. Don't worry about that, that's fine. And we have stuck it down like so. Now it's going to get a little bit noisy I'm afraid because I need to bring in my drawing tool cover up the glue in case we knock that over now you can obviously set this aside overnight to dry if you want to or if you want to work quickly as I need to for the demonstration you can force the dry so I'm just using my heat gun to dry this out Turn it over, dry the back as well. Okay, once it's dry, you're going to need some water, okay? If you want to stain it as you go, you can use the coffee that we just had, or you can use standard water. Now I'm just going to use the water out of my pen pot, and I'm going to re-wet this paper, okay? And then having, you would ask, why did you dry it? Well, we dried it because we needed to dry the glue and now we're wetting the paper. Now, you need to work very patiently, very gently and very slowly because if you get overzealous, you will get an area like this where you have got only glue and no image. There's also a slight area there, but we'll deal with that. So you need to work gently in slow circular movements and you will start to feel that the paper is breaking down under your finger and it's starting to rub away can you see that okay very gently i'm sure you can see that we're starting if i bring this up you're starting to get like bubbles and rough bits of paper that's where the paper's breaking down. Because in the same way that we take a napkin and we take out, or we take off, the two layers from the back just to keep the top layer that's got the printing on, all paper is layered in that way. So what we're doing here is we're removing the back layers of the paper, okay? To get the image that we just glued onto our fabric. And you can see it's starting to roll away, okay? And you'll get all these little wet paper rolls where it's rolling away. Look. See? That's what we want. And that is now the paper gone from that top bit. The paper's gone and the image is on the fabric. You might have some areas where there's still little bits that you can work at. 
just don't get carried away and rub too much off and then obviously keeping the next area wet and penetrating we can move on down so I'm just literally doing this oops doing these little rubs now because our fabric was not as wide as our original tag that's why that bit has come away it doesn't matter because obviously we don't need that bit anyway and just rubbing away gently it's very therapeutic don't get carried away we don't want any bald spots don't try and rush it this is one of those jobs that is not to be rushed okay You can add as much water as you want if you feel that where you've been rubbing it's dried out just add some more water which obviously is a bit of a contradiction to what we just said about the coffee dyeing and not getting inkjet prints too wet but of course we are not using the actual print here on the paper we're using the bit that we stuck to the fabric Lots of comments on yesterday's video. Seems a number of you have started the project and are happily working through. Um, there was a couple of comments. People didn't have things like the coffee dyed envelopes ready so they had to stop and go off and do them. That's absolutely fine. There is no rush here at all. I'm doing it day by day just so it's easy for you to find the videos you don't have to work on it every day crafting is not supposed to be a pressure it's supposed to be fun okay Give it a little shake, get off any extra bits that we don't want. Let's get some more water down the bottom here. Whoops, that again is where it's overhanging the fabric. Don't worry about that. So, everybody okay? Crafting away, making lots of glories. I did. Um, I have a little parcel in the post this morning. One of the groups I'm in, we had a tag swap. Uh, and I've received my swaps in today. So that's exciting. It's always lovely to see other people's work, how they interpret a brief. Now that bit you see has come off. It wasn't very well stuck. But again, bearing in mind we're doing vintage. That's absolutely fine by me. Sorry, a bit of concentration there because obviously I don't want to lose too much. Right, let's pick that up. Let's get rid of all these bits off our desk what my mum would call a midway tidy up right everything on the floor I have to have a clean up later right again with the blower I'm afraid you could obviously set this aside to dry overnight but for the purposes of the video I'm going to Force the dry with my heat tool. The other thing, of course, is if you're in a half hurry, <laughs> then you can um, put this on a heat source radiator or something. 
and it will dry quicker than if you left it overnight but not as quick as with this tool right I'm just rubbing off any excess bits that were left behind I'm going to give that another go okay and that is basically dry so let's get that out of the way before I knock that over let's get our scissors and all I'm going to do now is turn it over and I'm going to trim to the fabric now you can see that it is um, still a little bit damp on the back so I'm going to set it aside to dry properly I just wanted it dry enough to cut and I'm going to work on the demo one that I just showed you like so there you go and it's obviously fabric and it's got G's wonderful design on it it's obviously much more faded than the original one but with the whole vintage feel going on, that doesn't bother me. So I'm going to set that aside to dry along with our coffee dyed pages. Again, another midway tidy up. It's the only thing doing that technique does obviously create a little bit of mess. Okay, now the reason... Oh, let's work on this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take... I want an ink page. There we go. I'm going to take my blending brush. I'm going to dip it into my black. And I'm just going to do a few areas. Just to emphasise the edge. You can obviously do this with your vintage photo or whatever brown that you usually use. I just want to use the black because I want it to stand out a little bit more around the edge. I want it to be a little bit darker. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm just going to enhance our tag. So I'm going to put one just down the bottom there like so and then I think we'll have another one just there like so actually maybe one over there as well let's make it a real sunshiny garden so there you go that's our fabric tag so again, that's one component, ready and done. Let's put that to one side. Now what I wanted to do with my other one was I wanted to make like a postage tag. Now, obviously if you've got something like this, which is the postcard, that will go on there quite nicely. You could use that. If you haven't got something like that, you can just use some base text, okay? Now, I am actually, I think, going to use the text, even though I've got that. I've got some more cotton there. Perhaps we could do both. So, ink up my text. I'm going to move it. Oh, make sure it's up the right way, because I did this the other day. Yeah, see, I did it right upside down. Make sure you come in just a little bit. And pop it down in the middle. Okay? bit like a letter and then I am going to put my stamp on because we use these tags all the time for crafting but we shouldn't lose sight and make sure I got this up the right way we shouldn't use lose sight of the fact that originally they were parcel tags they used to go on to parcels for posting so I thought we'd do a parcel tag 
cake. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a postal tag on it or a franken mark. I'm just going to put it on the angle there like so and then I'm going to obviously I'm only print sticking these because as you know my stamps are filthy and they don't have any stick at the moment any washing so there you go we've got our postage stamp and our franken marks we've got a little bit of a letter okay and then i want to take my usual there's the scissors my usual card and i'm gonna i'm gonna put quite large tags on here, uh, cuffs on this tag. So I'm going to cut that one off, just rough up the side a bit. It's obviously, because that's been cut on the angle, needs a little bit more effort than when we just tear it in a straight line. I'm sure you all know the reason it roughs up so nicely is because you are going in the direction of the weave whereas of course we've cut across the weave here so there you go now we've got a tag fabric tag with our stamping and i will go around and stitch this on my machine obviously it's not necessary but it's something you can do if you want to while we're doing it i am going to do the um postcard one just because i've got it and it's out and I can so I'm just gonna pop that on there like that I'm gonna ink it up you can hear hubby on the phone in the background I'm sure he's working away in his office um, something's obviously going on that he's not overly impressed about because his voice is a bit louder than usual so make sure we get that on there Press it down. Oh. There we go. So now we've got one that's got a postcard on it. And obviously I'm going to do my corners again. So either way, I'm actually going to take a little bit off there. Make it a bit shorter. Always use that for something else later. I did tell you that today was all about the prep so lots of little things going on today rather than one whole one because it's you know getting things prepared and while we're talking about being prepared when I am here with you tomorrow uh, if anyone wants to make sure they're super organized there you go so now we've got a shorter one and again i will sew around that all right so let's set them to one side um if anybody wants to be super organized we're going to be looking at putting our journal section together tomorrow so you will need a number of coffee dyed sheets okay so let's close that up for a bit have a little tidy up right now I've got this sheet with the four postcards on. I'm calling them postcards just because, well, that's what they rhyme me on. And I'm going to tear just inside the edge of the postcards. And I'm going to tear it all the way down the middle like that. I'm going to set these two aside for something else. And now I'm going to stick this onto a piece of coffee dyed paper okay because I want the other side to be coffee dyed and because I want it to be a little bit stronger because as I said to you before I have printed the entire kit on just 80 gram copy of paper now if you've used the stronger paper um, you obviously don't need to stick another layer on. 
you could just use the rag roll coffee dye that we just did to make your back side of the page not quite so white okay so as always give it a really good press down like so and now I'm gonna tear that off I'm now gonna tear off the top and the sides but do not split the middle because we want to make this into a little light booklet okay got a little divot there again I'm not worried about that that is because the glue is still a little bit wet you could have set it what to one side to dry and done this piece to you know tomorrow when it's properly dry but it doesn't bother me I like the raggedy look of it oh she says I can't get through that I'm actually going to have to cut it I think I do like the raggedy look because I think it adds to the vintage element of things being old and worn but if it won't tear it won't tear and I don't want to set it aside and do it tomorrow because I have a million and one other things to do so There we go okay and then let's give it a smooth out from the back while the glue is still going off and then literally fold it over meet it at the end and it should fold right down that white line in between the two postcards the square images and now we've got a lovely little booklet to go inside our folder okay so that's that part now with these what I want to do is I want to pull off there like that and I want to I can't pull down there because those circles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round. Basically, I'm cutting round these tabs. I don't want the tabs at the moment. I will want them for something else later. And I'm also going to cut these tiny tags off the end there so set the tabs to one side right like so now <clears throat> while I'm fiddling around doing this um, if any of you saw G's video from yesterday late last night here in the UK um, I don't know what time it would have been anywhere else right now all I'm doing is I am tearing off the width of my roller I'm going to do it twice like so okay then going to fold it in half like so and I'm then going to fold it in half again like And what I stupidly didn't do was I didn't bring any paper clips with me. Hang on one second. I'm literally run around the other side of the desk and grab a couple of paper clips. Here we go. Paper clips. And I'm now going to put one. I'm just making all the paper clips here. I'm sure you've done it a million times before, 
but just in case you haven't this is the way I do it this is my process and today is all about getting the bits and pieces ready for our journal I always always leave an up area on my paper clips and the reason I do that is because I never know if I'm going to want to tie a bit of ribbon or something through there once it's done so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put wet glue in the middle heavily of the paper clip there okay and then I'm going to use my prick stick on the half that has no paper clip on And then I'm literally going to close it up like so. And whoops, stuck to that one. Okay, rub off any liquid glue that's come out. So that's that bit. And then again, just exactly the same here. The reason I do it this way is because, as you know, I like my prick stick, but I find that the tacky glue holds a paper clip that bit better. Okay, so now obviously what you've got is this square of paper with paper clip on the outside and on the inside. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I am just going to put some background stamp of text like so all right and then I want to you could obviously do that with a little bit of book page if you wanted to that's obviously fine I'm going to have this odd little bit that we cut off from the reduced postcard tag. I'm just going to put a little snip, tear that off, and I'm going to add that on there like that. And I'm going to add that one down the bottom on that one. And then I'm going to use one of these lovely little tiles. I think I'm going to go for this one with the lavender and I'm not quite sure what that is in the background but I like this one so I'm going for that one and then I'm going to go for this lily on this one I always like to cut them out like this um, from the main sheet so that if I get carried away with my scissors I don't cut into one of the other designs. I have done that many times and learned my lesson the hard way. It's always easier to cut it out with excess white on and then just trim it up afterwards. So then that one will sit on there. We might even put a little bit of cheesecloth under there as well in a minute. And I'm going to do a couple of little like dangles with the mini. I'm going to put this one on here. Get rid of all those little bits. I might be trying to change my sheet tomorrow. My background sheet. So a little tiny bit of cheesecloth. You know cheesecloth rocks in my world. Love it, love it, love it. Probably use almost as much cheesecloth in my crafting as I do paper. I just love it. So fabric on there. 
Okay. Let's cut this in half because that's way too big. Or even a third. And then I'm going to put that overlapping like so. Do you remember what I said to you? But I always like to have four layers. So we've got layer one, layer two, layer three. Here's our little tile. Now I've not inked over these. You could easily have inked around all the edges if you wanted to. And now I've got my first altered paper clip. Put that over there with what we've been doing. And it's this is how I work. It's just about building up a collection of stuff that we're going to use when we come to fill our folder with all our goodies. This is still too big, so I'm going to trim this again. And just put that up there. Like so. And then our tile. Those. And this is where when I'm making a project, I like to have twos and threes because you've got a matching pair, but they've got their own variant. And I just think it helps keep conformity throughout your project. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to have all oh, these two pinky ones. And again, cutting out roughly at first. So, got those two. I'm going to lean over to my fabric box and just randomly pull out an odd spray of fabric. This is an old pillowcase, and I'm just going to pull that off. Now the reason I've pulled this piece out is because it's got the pink, the same as is in those mini tags. Again, you can use any fabric for this. Please don't, you know, worry about it. It can be anything. And then what I'm going to do, having pulled the threads off, <coughs> and see these are all just pieces that I've had that I have lying around. You don't have to ever really get involved in loads of expensive stuff. I think you know when you consider that with digital kits like we're using here. You're paying generally, well, I don't know, two, three, four pounds. And you can print that kit generally 100, 200 times. Digital kits are so, so cheap compared to paper pads. Obviously, also, because you're printing it, you can decide whether to print all of it or just one or two pages. So, you know, when you're starting out, if you purchase yourself one or two kits, a ream of paper and a fairly good sized pot of glue, you're away. Off you can go because you can use that kit in exactly the way it was designed. We're cutting out the tags and we're going to make things with them. Or, as we did with the transfer, you can totally use parts of the kit for other jobs. So, you can go on and on and on. And on and on and on. That reminds me of some food advert. I can't think what it is now. 
um, and create almost an endless supply of things that look different every time using the same base materials. And I think, in all honesty, that is one of the reasons this type of crafting really, really, really appeals to me. Really, really, really. And I think that's a, another song, isn't it? Right, just going to put a little snip in there. I've got glue all over my fingers now, which is why try and rub that off. Things are not... Oh! Right. There you go. There's that one. And there's... I have actually creased that little tag. But that'll be fine. And then again I'm going to pull it off there. Because um, as you can see, basically it's all. I want to get that crease out. There we go. It's all um, paper and fabric. Paper, fabric, and glue. That's all it is. And then I've got an odd bit of hessian here. So I think we'll use that to add some additional additional strength to it so we just pop that on there like so we want it about there so please just have a good rummage around on your desk and pull up odd bits and pieces that you've got lying around and as my nan would say, look at it from the left instead of the right. Get a different approach to it. Okay. And then pull that across there. Pull that one out. Just like that. And we've got, whoops, a little dangle. And I'm just going to Put a little hole in that so that I can put a pin. And of course I haven't got a pin either. Right, well I'm not going to get up again. But, um, you can obviously put a little bulb pin or even a safety pin or something through there. So that's that one. And then this one will go in this piece, like so. Put a couple of pieces out to get our rough edges. There we go. I've got glue, look, everything's sticking to me. And again, I'm going to put another little hole in there. That's that one. Clear all this off. Right, now, what I want to do now is I want to use a bit of book page. So, I'm going to pull up some book page. I'm going to fold it. One third that way, and then over like that. That's going to give us super amount of strength. Okay, and then going to run glue down the centre of the end flap, across the top and bottom of the middle. Turn that over, press that down, and then run it down the edge. And the top and the bottom of the extra piece. Now I've got a nice strong piece of book page. Okay, I'm going to take. Where's my ruler gone? I'll take just under this width of a 
folded book page. And I want to make sure that's scraped. So run that down there like that. Okay. I'm going to skip that on there so that you can't necessarily read what's on the book page, but obviously you can see the word in behind, which is always nice. Okay. I am going to glue down the back of that piece of coffee dyed paper. I'm going to put it into the centre of this folded book page. Again, if you want to, you can obviously ink up all the edges. I know I do usually ink everything, but I don't feel so compelled with this one for some odd reason. Okay, I'm going to take, obviously, a piece of cheesecloth. Why would you think I would do anything else? Quite a big piece. And I'm going to open that out a bit. I'm going to get it down the middle there. Now this is the folded seam. I don't necessarily want that because it will never obviously fray. Let me cut that bit off and bin it. Okay. Cheesecloth through roughly the middle. Doesn't have to be exact. And then one of these delightful pot belly labels that I kept referring to them the other day. Let's use this beautiful puffball one. And just fussy cut that out. So, Hubby and I have got so bored with telly, we are now re-watching programmes that we've loved and watched before. I'm sorry, but that's really sad, isn't it? And yes, I know normally you'd say, well, turn the telly off, sit down and talk, share life, etc. But... As we work at home together all day, we talk at tea break and coffee uh, coffee break and lunch time. And so by the time the evening comes, oh, hello, boo. So by the time the evening comes, unless something has happened of a great note in the last like hour of the day, there's not really much to discuss because we've already talked all through the day. There we go. Got a lovely little belly band or side band. Right. I'm going again. So what I'm doing here is I am pulling off two of these little corner pockets. Okay, I'm going to separate them like so, and now I'm going to neatly cut them out. Right. So, sorry, I started saying, and I got distracted by something. Um, if you saw G's video of yesterday, she did some beautiful tags with 
well, like a silhouette stencil. Um, now, I have seen her do that before in reverse, and I do think it's pretty awesome. Again, I'm sticking on here because it's thin paper. I'm now going to glue down the other half of the book page just to give me some real strength to that pocket. Okay, and then I'm going to tear it off slightly over. Just so that we've got some background for that pocket but obviously only on that side because these are our fold over pieces so we can trim those to exact size like so just adds a little bit extra stability and something you know extra to the pocket okay now with this one i'm going to do exactly the same principle that we just did but i'm going to give it some fluff so i'm going to cut round it properly And I'm going to make this the last one for today because I think I've held you long enough. I think we've been here nearly an hour today. <clears throat> so exactly the same. Let's glue the back of the pocket. All right. Take a piece of cheesecloth or whatever your fluff of fancy is you might want to do it with a bit of ribbon that would work and cover the edge okay so just down the edge here that's the edge of the pocket that you're gonna see okay like so leave a little bit overhanging like so let me just turn that over so you can see what I mean so you see you've got some sticking out then stick your pocket down like so okay and again fold it over Give you the added strength for that top side. Okay, take your tear roller, get your fluff out the way, and tear that down like so because now. You've got some fluff on your extended pocket. So I think that's quite a few things that we've got done today. Keep you going towards completing our, our project, our file folder project. So, shall we just bring them in and have a look? Remind ourselves what we've done. So, get rid of all that excess. The first thing we did was we took our digital kit pages and we rag rolled them to get some less white interest on the back okay some of this red as you can see 
has bled through but that just adds to interest that's absolutely fine so we coffee dyed the pages we did our transfer image tag we did our stamped posting tags we did our little booklet we did two little danglies we did two altered poke clips we did our belly band or our side band obviously we stamped on that one didn't we because that was my previous one and then we've just done two little corner pockets I think that's quite an achievement for today all parts for our file folder project when we get it finished so as always thank you for joining me stay safe happy crafting see you soon bye for now